Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, bringing you the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Today I'm in the town of Plainfield, Indiana, at the heart of the crossroads of America. This is an inner circle suburb of the city of Indianapolis, which is the state capital and the state's largest city. We're just uh, 30 minutes away from the uh, downtown circle, where you can find all of the major sports teams and their venues, like the uh, NFL Colts, the uh, NBA Pacers, WNBA, NBA uh, Fever with Caitlin Clark, the Indy 11 soccer team. Hey, there's just a whole lot going on downtown and it's just 30 minutes away. So if you're interested in moving to or in the uh, greater Indianapolis area or central Indiana, you might want to learn a little bit about the town of Plainfield, Indiana. It was established in 1839 and was largely a Quaker community. Uh, you can see here that uh, this whole park here is for the uh, Plainfield Friends Meeting House. Heck, the uh, mascot of the uh, high school team is the Quakers. Now, the population has increased to 36,000, up from 27,600 in 2010. You can see they've got some new higher-end apartments and retail here that have been built uh, just uh, a block down from the town center. The median household income is uh, right at 77,000 and changes, which is just slightly above the national average. We are in Hendricks County and we are walking along US 40, which is also Main Street, but more importantly, it is uh, or was and is the National Road. This is one of the first uh, roads that took people, new uh, auto owners, back 100 years or so ago across the United States. It is called the National Road. On the southern edge of Plainfield is uh, I-70, which uh, hey, takes you across uh, the United States now. You've got State Road 267, which runs through the town north and south. And we're just uh, 10 or 15 minutes away from I-465, which is the Beltway, and that'll take you anywhere you wanna go in the metro area. And we're just minutes away from I-69, I-65, and I-74. And so, yes, we're truly at the heart of the crossroads of America. Whenever I give a tour of a town, there's always a few things that people always want to know about. I mean, they want to know about healthcare, and yes, there's a hospital here in town. And they want to know about shopping and restaurants, and yes, there is a mall here, and yes, people eat out here at uh, a whole host of different restaurants. Another thing that people are always interested in is the schools, and uh, the town of Plainfield does not disappoint. The Plainfield Public School Corporation is rated A plus by niche.com. In fact, it is ranked number seven out of 290 public school systems in the state of Indiana. I mean, that's crazy good. That puts them in the top 3% of all public school systems in the state. Another thing that uh, people are always interested in are uh, parks and recreational opportunities. So, the town of Plainsfield has 20 miles of trails. They've got the 11,300 square foot uh, Carlucci Recreational and Aquatic Center. They've got the 205 acre Hummel Park with all these sports venues behind me and trails and fishing lakes. It's just a pretty nice place. And then in the process or under development is an, a 1928 acre Echo Hollow Nature Park, which they uh, hope to make into a regional tourist attraction. So if you're considering moving here, you're going to want to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. In addition to being at the heart of the crossroads of America with I-70, I-74, I-65, and I-69, it also borders the Indianapolis International Airport. So there are many warehouses, distribution centers, and light manufacturing facilities located right here. I'm standing in the middle of a 1,033 acre uh, warehouse district. Um, I mean, right up here, you've got Pep Boys, you've got Pro Logistics, you've got, uh, up on the next corner, you have Dick's uh, Sporting Goods, and across the street here, you have a huge Amazon uh, distribution center. But there are many, many more here. This entire district employs about 5,000 people, which is roughly half of all the warehouse jobs that there are in central Indiana. So Plainfield has a lot to offer in the way of employment opportunities. 
Okay, let's talk real estate. After all, this is a real estate channel. There were 431 homes sold in the town of Plainfield in the past year. They ranged in price from uh, 85,000 to 950,000, with the median price being right around 349,000. And we're gonna take a look at a couple that are priced right in that neighborhood today. We're gonna start with 9298. Anthem Avenue. This is in the Hidden Lakes development at Hobbs Station. This is a new build by Taylor Morrison, which bought out Pyatt Builders oh, just a couple months back. And uh, they've got a uh, pretty nice little development going on right here, as you can see. This is their Babbitt model. And uh, FYI, this one's listed by uh, Pyatt Builders, probably Taylor Morrison now. But uh, FYI, I can help you with any home for sale in the state of Indiana, whether it's listed by um, the owner or another brokerage, myself, or even if it's a FISBO. This one has a modern style elevation with a charming front porch. You've got an open concept uh, living area. The kitchen features a center island, quartz countertops, and stainless steel appliances. Off the side, you've got a, a breakfast room with a private patio. And upstairs, you've got the uh, master bedroom with its private ensuite, plus two additional bedrooms and a laundry room. The ticket on this one is just uh, $349,990. This next section is guaranteed to make you money. If you uh, have a home to sell, be sure to tune in. If you don't, well, hey, you may want to skip ahead then to uh, the next home on our tour. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're going to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm gonna arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, people are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job, is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by, and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you're gonna to wanna to be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color. Flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around, they're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door, knock down the spider webs, power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't wanna do it, I know a guy. Number four, once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey, so the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage, you can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying and it's God awful true. 
Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. And the guy just refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll want to choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not want to look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You wanna motivate them. It's not about you, it's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. So you may wanna consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years. But a buyer coming in, those are like trigger points for them as to say, well, maybe the house hasn't been taken care of or it just doesn't give you that first impression. You may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures. Hey, it all depends. And when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house, you're gonna wanna remember this because yes, it's a pain in the donkey, but kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna wanna walk through your house and you're gonna wanna thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chest of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor. That doesn't help create a good feeling. So. Hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. That's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. They're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. Every house has a list and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. Hey, you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So, unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, somebody writing an offer, hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't wanna hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't want to paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. 
Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way to getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned. And yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck was just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat, I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's gonna want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. He couldn't get a hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've got an open house tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and I will be here at eight o'clock. And, and if you wanna get a look before everybody else does, be here at eight o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to eight and the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take him through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. We're moving on down the road. We're gonna take a look at an existing house. 
um, that was built in 1987. This one's priced right in here at the uh, median price point. This is 1007 Cory Lane. It's kind of like over towards between the hospital and the high school areas. It's got 1,573 square feet. It's a three bedroom, two bath, beautiful brick ranch. The great room here sports uh, vaulted ceilings and a pretty fireplace. The kitchen features new kitchen cabinets, granite uh, countertops and tile backsplash. It's got upgraded appliances that were new in 2019 and other updates uh, which were made in 2016. These included a new roof, gutters, windows and doors, plus HVAC and a deluxe California closet. It's also got a screened in porch and a patio, a yard barn for storage and the oversized two car attached garage. This one is uh, listed by Remax Centerstone Realtors and the ticket on it is $339,503. Just FYI, I'm a former contractor. When I uh, show people homes, I can give them uh, oh, some insights into whether a wall can be removed to open something up or whether something really needs to be repaired or it's uh, something that they don't really have to worry about, maybe something that's been there forever and ever and it's not going anywhere. Uh, so I can help dispel myths there, help people get the home they want, um, and maybe save them some money in the process. And hey, if I can't uh, figure it out, then I've got a stable of good contractors that are reliable, they work for um, a fair dollar, and uh, they do a really nice job, and they can do just about anything. So hey, if you see a house that you like, but it's not quite right, hey, they can have it uh, turnkeyed, uh, for you so that uh, within 30 days you can move in and you have the, the total house that you wanted. Now if you'd like to see any of these just uh, give me a quick call or text and we'll set it up and get you taken care of and now hey you make it a great day. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. It's August 2024 and the big news this month is drum roll, inventory is growing. It's up 20% across central Indiana and in fact statewide it's at a higher level than it's been since January of 2020. And that's a good thing to see. So what are some of the reasons for this growing inventory? There's the number of closed sales, which has slowed. It's down 7% year over year. Surprisingly, prices are sticky. They are up 3% in fact from a year ago. They now sit at $310,000 for the median price in central Indiana. Half of the homes are selling in 15 days or less, and the other half, well, they're taking a month or more, some much, much longer. And they're selling on average for 98% of the list price. So that $310,000 median sale price, that house was probably listed at $315,500. That tells you kind of what you can expect from a negotiation standpoint, whether you're buying or selling. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.